So um, do I, uh, I? I guess I'll need to introduce myself for the uh, for my head. Uh, I, I guess he doesn't know me. You know, we we have male stuff. So uh, for the rest, they know me. Maimuna Tarif, a front end uh, software engineer, uh, mainly front end these days, but my juggle here and there. So yeah, that was my intro. <laughs> okay, we'll be talking about uh, storybook. So yeah, I'm trying to joke around here and I picked the worst theme. <laughs> I just know the book and I just picked it. So I didn't make this. So what we're talking about, we're talking about an open source tool for developing uh, UI components in isolation for React, Vue, Angular, and uh, there are so many other libraries that, I, that it supports. Uh, it's, it's, it's just like um, boosting itself here because I got this code from them from the very first page of it. Just a second. Cool. Now we're going to see why am I like talking about this tool. So this is just key pinpoints here, like the key benefits. It, it helps you build components in isolation. I will talk about this one by one. I'm just adding this extra page for the illusion of having many slides and stuff because it is it's not a huge topic. Uh, increase awareness, uh, style guide and documentation, testing. Okay. Let's go for the first one. Uh, build components in isolation. So let's say you're creating your React app. You do uh, React view, whatever app. Uh, you do not have your like the pager where you're going to use your component. So this thing allows you to test them, view them, and like check them up. Everything. Uh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. My brain just paused the white noise. So yeah, it allows you to view, test, and do whatever you want to do with your component. In isolation, you do not need to put it inside the working application. You do not need to like uh, uh, pull you the, your environment, create test files and stuff. Because we used to do that quite a while because uh, maybe I'm ma building something which is not directly being used. So I would just go put it somewhere and then sometimes would comment it, leave comments there. Uh, yeah, and then uh, forget to delete it and stuff. So yeah, this is very cool to like uh, do your stuff isolated. Increase awareness uh, here. What I'm talking about is like, uh, let's say we're a couple of devs working in the front end, not just one. So one of us just made uh, component A, B, and C. And I, I'm not sure if he made them or not. If, if there's no storybook, I don't know. I might make the mistake of just recreating something that is already there. So this saves me from this because I just go to the storybook project. I can see the list. Uh, I'll show you uh, how it looks like and what it's all about. So uh, yeah, it's gonna save me the pain of looking around all the files because you know, a VS Code doesn't, I mean, it helps you to look at the components visually there. I mean, here you're going to yeah read this file, that file and make sure if it's used here and there. So yeah, it, sa it saves you that problem of recreating stuff and and helps you stay aware of whatever is there and whatever is not there. Uh, living style guide and documentation. For style guides, uh, these are usually documentation stuff for um, companies that usually have like what fonts we're going to use uh, throughout their applications and stuff. What, uh, what kind of border radius goes there, like uh, some guidance. Usually they use, uh, I'm not sure about us, if we have that mm -hmm. because we just recreate it like uh, per project. It's like uh, to have your character all throughout your projects and stuff in the company and stuff. So they do have like a style guide, what kind of fonts they're using, font sizes, uh, families and all these kind of stuff. Not only fonts, but their main colors and stuff. So yeah, instead of having a dull PDF or having your sketch files, you could have them in storybook where you can interact, see them, and uh, by adding some add-ons, you can also see how to make them, like use them directly by copy pasting mm -hmm. the code. Cool. Uh, the other part, uh, yeah, so that's for the style guides, uh, because I'm not sure about uh, so much about style guides. For the other documentation part, it's like, um, let's say I did not build the component ABC, someone else built them. I go to Storybook, I click on it, I see how it looks like, and I can see what props it takes. So it's like, uh, just like whenever I'm going to a documentation of Material UI or all the other, uh, and mm. yeah, I go, I'm going to read about like, I click on button, I'm going to read what props it takes and stuff. So uh, here, Storybook does this for you. For you. Like it, it does all the documentation, what, what props it takes and stuff. So yeah. Visually test edge cases here. 
Um, I, uh, let me just read this one. You can see if it's looking fine. Yeah, you can see, of course, if it's looking fine, if it has the right colors or not, if it's responsive or not, because it has the feature. I'm not sure if it's an add-on or directly there, but you can like uh, change screen sizes and stuff. You can also view what props are working or not in it. So I'm going to jump in the docs uh, and how are they using it? Okay, okay, uh, this, well, okay, this is ours. This is ours. So this is how Storybook uh, looks like. Whatever you add, uh, like uh, we've created the button, we just add it to Storybook. Storybook is going to like, uh, yeah, these are the two different types uh, of buttons we have here. Not the two different types, but the two subtypes of base button. So it gives you the playground to play with the background colors and stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, or whatever props you added there, it allows you to play with them without actually having to code the button. Uh, I mean, uh, we use the button somewhere just to make sure if it has whatever you're looking for. Um, the width and stuff, I guess it was about 100% uh, before I played with it a bit. So yeah, uh, looking through here, as I said, uh, it visually helps you like, uh, Test your stuff. I just realized I do not have a prop for changing the font color. It says why. So I'm gonna change that one. Good for me to know. So uh, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, it helps you add a grid and stuff. Uh, here you can check the responsiveness of whatever components you have. So this is part of that testing part, like that mm -hmm. if you have a view. So it's all isolated. Uh, let's go a bit with uh, their component, uh, their own library. So I do not have all the add-ons uh, in our project, but we do have them here. I mean, they do have them. This is an example project you can access from the website. So their add-ons are like a bit cooler. They have this story one. Yeah, this caught my attention and the usability, accessibility one. So here, this is the exact code that you're going to, uh, after importing your component, like paste it there, which is going to bring that component there with the same arg, args, uh, arguments. And well, we have here, okay. Uh, I was gonna like give a walkthrough through the uh, code, like the way we're doing it, but it's a little bit mm. different than the ones, uh, the other projects because we're using uh, TypeScript, uh, TypeScript, yeah. So it's going to uh, look a bit different. Just uh, focus on this part. These uh, uh, other imports for icons and stuff. Main thing you have to do, just uh, uh, let me just go through a, a simpler file. Yeah, this is quite simple. Yeah, you're going to import React. You're going to import Storybook if you're using the JavaScript, not uh, TypeScript, so you don't need to. And then the importing your component. As I say, it is, you're going to pass uh, it through an object. You're going to export an object of uh, title. The first one, you're going to, uh, yeah, so this is from the section button and this is the name of it. This is the name of the component. And then as meta, this is part of TypeScript. If you're not using TypeScript, you do not need this part, nor this import. So this little thing is all that you need just to add your new component to add it to the uh, storybook list, whatever you have there. It's, it's I mean, after every uh, making every component, it doesn't take more than five minutes to add your component there. For the, uh, when, whenever I had like, uh, uh, let me see which component is this one, component floating action button. Yeah, so I had like varieties of uh, different props per uh, each one. Like I had the default and the disabled with different prop types. So that's why I had like uh, quite more code here. Let me just, what was that here? Oops, it went down. Okay, let me just shift this one because I guess, yeah. Yeah, here. So it's going to create you these subtypes just objects with different um, props and it's going to change it here. So it's not much code and the setup isn't also that difficult because if you go through it here, yeah, he, here's also an example of the same part of code. This is how it looks in uh, JavaScript and this is how it looks in TS where we have, uh, we're importing meta and then we are adding uh, it as a type here for this component. For installation, it's quite easy. If you're doing it for, I mean, it depends on how you're configuring your stuff, but we have a quite uh, a bit more complicated setup for Golands, uh, the, uh, the components I was showing before, but in general, if you're just adding it to any other project where you're uh, using create react tab, it's, it's just going to uh, get in there. Let me just see, what, what was it, what, what did it, what? yeah. NPX SB in it, that's it. It's going to check the type of project you're using, whether it's the uh, view 
um, React or whatever other thing, it's going to configure itself like whoop, create itself. After that, you're going to run npm run storybook and it's going to run because ours is uh, configured a little differently. So we just do, uh, we go to the demo file and say npm start and it's going to start. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys there. Okay. Oopsie, no quotes. I, I, I like to keep these, <laughs> but add nothing to them. So yeah, from, uh, I didn't know what to name this slide though. I even made some <laughs> posters, so I just keep it here. So this, uh, I believe these are like some extra stuff I found, uh, whoopsie, what did I do? Uh, useful. It encourages mm -hmm. usability of code because sometimes we had like components, smaller components, and that big like a component that, uh, that is a container that is going to center your stuff. So maybe if I'm not looking through storybook, I didn't, I wouldn't know that exists. And it's like a few lines of code. So I'm just going to rewrite mm -hmm. it every time. But it was there. I mean, it, it encouraged me to like reuse whatever is there. And even if it's not reusable, I'm going to modify it, make it more flexible. Mm -hmm. So I do not have to create something new, which was true, I guess, for this component. Where I thought I need to create something new, but I did not. I just went there and modified the actual ones here. It, it wasn't gonna look like this. So I just added some extra style to it, but it's the main base component. Mm. Main base component that I was able to modify that way, saving me some lines of code. Yeah, I feel, I don't think we have Ahed here, but I was going to ask her yeah. if it's, if it's going to like bridge the gap between us, like uh, we're not, we should not, I mean, open the whole project and show her everything. If we have like uh, her sketch stuff, if they're matching here directly, she would be able to access the story because uh, if you build it, uh, you run the build command and then you can host it on the GitHub pages. So it will be quickly accessible. If there's something wrong with any component, any page, any form, it will be quickly visible for them easier so they would not have to download everything in their computers and stuff and like only whenever we're testing they're going to see these issues that we're going to face yeah for mm. these uh, for the for the final part uh not the final one the help detects component bugs and stuff from my personal experience i got like uh, lots of bugs in my components through this one and through storybook now we we're going to it like uh, just uh, just a bit ago, like I just found out I'm missing a uh, prop in my button. Maybe I have it and I did not put it there. So it'd be like, uh, what do we say, changeable. Yeah, because we had a place where we were playing with the controls. Maybe just didn't put it there, but I'll double check it. And uh, also Vladislav like caught a lot of my um, uh, building mistakes there because sometimes stuff wouldn't be responsive. And at that point, it, would, it wasn't going to be directly inside the application because we would not be using it at that stage for you. If not for storybook, these things would have uh, slipped away. So just one, uh, hopefully it gave uh, like a, a good enough idea about it. So what do you guys think about it? Storybook, is it gonna be beneficial in your perspective? Uh, so I'll say, first of all, I'm, I'm actually very happy you brought this up because uh, you like you're introducing this to us because it's uh, quickly becoming a standard anyways in the industry to have something like this um, as part of your application and i think it's going to be very useful especially uh, I'm, we, we should be using it for our projects but especially when we're going towards the product's direction right and so in that case it's going to be very it's, i would say a requirement for us to have something like this so yeah i like it yeah and, and I, I, I think we should be. A hundred percent, you know, I was just talking to Matt earlier today about kind of really ingraining the concept of reusability and automation, because mm -hmm. as we kind of go, you know, basically, you know, we want to be spending our time doing stuff that's really high value and complex and kind of do away with stuff that's already been solved. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I feel this is a big piece of it. So, so generally, I think, yeah, I totally agree. And like, we need to kind of work if it's not this specific tool. Something very much like it should be worked into um, into our workflow, and I, and I think if this is working and is pretty well mm -hmm. vetted, then then maybe specifically Storybook could be uh, worked into our workflow. I think um, so. So maybe that's something that we want to take forward and see how we can kind of uh, actually implement it, and 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 maybe kind of even uh, document this into our workflows. Um, that said, I do have a question about like. Um, uh, unfortunately, Ahid isn't here, but kind of 
yeah. um, how, how, how does this kind of fit into the actual workflow? So, you know, let's say you have a new project, uh, mm -hmm. we do a little discovery work, um, certain types of projects, uh, even Golands, for instance, uh, what mm -hmm. really sold the project was actually the sketch files, was actually the design. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, so how, what would that workflow look like, right? So I would go in there and build like a Figma or design file uh, yeah. or sketch file and then and then what what happens after that okay she creates the sketch file let's say she gives us some nice typography some nice buttons and stuff mm -hmm. we're going to take a look at it we have to create these buttons and stuff anyways we have to create the low level components anyway so we're going to create them the extra step would be there just to uh, from the very beginning of the project install storybook or maybe in the middle and then start adding your um, your, uh, your made up components, uh, not made up. I mean, the components you just made, uh, add them to Storybook. It wouldn't take much work. I mean, as you saw, the files are quite simple. It's just you import it and then you add it to the uh, little object and that's it. It's going to run. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Maimuna. So, so this is how I'm imagining it. It would be, um, uh, so we get our designs. Let's say we build mm -hmm. our button components or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then as part of building that component, we're also adding, uh, let's say we add our tests, we also add this, which is kind of like documentation, right? So we'll yeah. add this as well as part of building our component. So it's just an additional step in our implementation process. Is that correct? Yeah, say? yeah, that, that, that's what I meant. Okay. Uh, I have. I, I also have a question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been curious about this tool for a long time. I haven't actually looked at it. So, but uh, I'm glad. That's why I'm happy you brought it up. Uh, so, when it comes to um, when it comes to because you showed us, you can kind of customize the um, the components uh, through the storybook dashboard or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. When you're making a customization, that's just like testing it out, right? It's as if you're opening your dev tools and you're testing something on a live site. Yeah. It anything is changing. You're just testing it out and then implementing it later in your actual code base. Is that? I did not understand your question quite a bit. Uh, you're asking me how do I customize it there or are you asking me if it, if it is the part of where I'm testing it? Uh, my, my question is, I saw you, when you were showing a storybook dashboard, right? Yeah. You were making some changes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those changes are just for testing purposes. They're not actual... Um, it's not like you're actually changing anything in the component itself. Storybook is not for changing exactly. anything in the component, correct? Exactly. Exactly. It's just documentation. So yeah. So so what I was saying, yeah, these changes are just like uh, we're just redrawing our component again and again on the screen with uh, different props. So this is just like using it in a different page. This is not going to change the actual component. This is just the props. Like, let's say I'm using it for a certain page as it for uh, to be uh, in the default state. Of course, we're not going to have it that way. We're going to change the text and stuff. Maybe in another one, we want it to be in default props. This is not the prop that is uh, disabled. This is the name of the button I'm giving it with these uh, uh, prop values. These props are built into the component I built. So it's, if, if, uh, if I'm going to give it these, uh, what do you say, uh, props, and these props are going to show here. Whatever prop I add there it is going to show here for the button. This is not the exact button I was showing there. That was a floating button. So yeah, you'll be able to fiddle with it, test it here, um, look at it and see if it's going to fit your need. Maybe you want a button that is going to take a million lines of code. So you can test it from here and make sure if it's going to take the million lines you want. And if it's going to break that case, uh, and of course we're not gonna use that thing. That case exactly. Uh, did I answer you, Mara, or did I like went to the outer space? No, 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 no. You you answered my question. It's clear. Cool. Um. What, by the what way, I'm? Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. No. No, no, no. I was about to change the slides, so I. Uh, yeah, you go on. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because mine is more of a wrap up com comment almost. Okay. Cool. For the next thing, yeah. So I learned it initially from. Uh, yeah, code evolution, not from the docs, because I have this fear of docs. <laughs> I'm getting over it. So I learned it from a code evolution channel, YouTube channel. It has everything about React. 
basics, intermediates, some extra libraries like Formic itself, like from zero to uh, advanced and kind of stuff. Also storybook, uh, I guess it was the only place I found storybook uh, like discussed in details. I did not find it anywhere else on the internet. Uh, from my searching perspective, like I did search, I did not find it. So this was where I learned it and I, like, I recommend if you wanna learn it, so try Code Evolutions channel. And it's like one of the very first, um, what do you say, playlist you're gonna find there. Yeah, and I wanted to say thanks for being here and just making sure any other questions. Yeah, and bottom here, I'm just giving the credits to the guys who designed these slides, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> nice choice though. <laughs> uh, and yes, it's really important to have attribution. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I thought this was really interesting. I think for me, the last sort of, uh, question slash comment is um, how and how fast are we going to <laughs> be integrating this into our workflow? We do have a few projects like on the horizon mm -hmm. and I would like to see, as I always mentioned, each project better than the previous one. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to see how we can kind of implement into the workflow in a way that's not shoehorning, in a way that's um, kind of cumulatively adding value rather than just like forcing it in and and not doing this mm -hmm. properly so um does anybody have any ideas kind of what would be the next practical thing to do here maybe before the next project let's just have like a short uh, workshop we're going to like mm -hmm. demo it and like record the demo and whatever and like provide these resources we have so I'm, I'm sure this is kind of, it's just one of the simplest uh, libraries I found. Like it does have its complexities, but whatever I am using are like the 80% of the easy stuff of it. So it's not like that hard to learn. Okay. And then I guess from a systems perspective, like from a company workflow perspective, uh, I guess this question is more for a man. Um, yeah. What would you propose we do to kind of embed this into our workflow? Uh, well, Come, going forward, I think no matter what, this is going to be, I mean, critical to have in our, because we're going, we're doing bigger projects. So mm -hmm. we need to be, make, make sure that we have everything in check. And then uh, I'm working, I mean, all, everything I'm working on is a transition project. And I, and uh, if our projects are transitioning, like from a team to another team, this is going to be critical. Uh, sorry, I, I think I lost your question. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, um, no, no, I, first of all, I totally agree. I totally agree with all that sentiment. Again, this goes with the theme of sort of um, handovers and seamless transitions. I think that that's one, one huge problem to solve. But really the question was like, how do we kind of uh, embed this into our workflow so that mm. it's not, you know, it's not just us who are on the call that are going to be using it, but this hopefully will be implemented company-wide. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in, in the workflow, in my opinion, the way I see it is we're going to be doing this as part of implementation. So when you're implementing, specifically when you're working on the UI, as you're building whatever component you're building, you're going to have to test it. You're going to have to also add it. You're going to have to document it, right? And to me, this is the documentation mm -hmm. where you have a place for it and then someone can go, anybody can go. You know, any designer can go and say, eh, actually, let's change it to this, let's change it to that. They can test it out. They can, you know. So I think this is something I'm thinking already of adding it to our um, engineering standards uh, mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a technology that we should be using. And in my opinion, it's in the implementation stage. So as you're implementing, you're adding components to the story, uh, storybook. I don't know if that yeah. is the answer. I mean, I mean, I mean, there is no, I mean, I'm not looking for any particular answer. Oh, other than I'd right. like to see this embedded as part of our workflow. Mm. And yeah, I, I think that your, your solution sort of um, aligns I with that. I want to mention though is, 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 is a good thing, which is maybe, maybe like a quick workshop, mm -hmm. even uh, like, even this course that she's, she's mentioning, I mean, just a, a, a thing we recommend for everybody in the team, just check this mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Whatever it is, yeah. um, just to get familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, and I think like uh, Maimuna, maybe that's like a cool thing you could do. Like as as we add this to our engineering standards, as Mav said, in the implementation phase. Uh, mm -hmm. Since you've actually used these tutorials, maybe you can even like high grade it, so you can kind of like 
uh, prioritize like, okay, look, if you're only going to do the most minimum stuff in these like docs, like just look at these things to get started. So, um, so at the very least, you know, the value added here is that people can get started as fast as possible, basically. Uh, is that mentioned as a workshop or as a, like writing the, um, well, uh, as, as writing it down to, I would say writing it down, um, as part of the documentation. Cool. Um, and then, you know, and then we can decide like if a workshop is needed and then if so, then like, um, then we can just coordinate them. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science. <laughs> cool. I'll do okay. that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. All right. I have one last question. Yeah. Sorry. No, yeah, Sorry. go ahead. Oh, this is like, again, kind of a wrap up question. Um, actually, uh, I was thinking this actually could make for a pretty cool, um, Twitter post. <laughs> um, I hope you don't mind. Maybe if we just like take like some snippets, I might gif it a little bit um, and, and turn it into a Twitter post. I'll share it with you beforehand, but just wanted to, 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 to get your approval before we do that. <laughs> It'll be just <laughs> yeah. like a few, maybe just like a few seconds with some comments, like a high level summary. Yeah, cool. So I'm not sure where I, what I have to do because I didn't get that part, but I, what, what I got, like, you want to create a post? Yeah, we can create a post and, and reference you. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with that. Uh, yeah, I'm quite comfortable with that. I don't use Twitter, though. <laughs> it's just there. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Cool. So anything else, guys? Thanks, That's Nina. all for me. Uh, I like it. Uh, and I think we need to implement it in Pizro, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's going to be a cool thing to add because it was yeah. one of the most painless library I had ever had <laughs> in the learning process. Cool. Right. Cool. So, so, so what's up for me next is like yeah. uh, so summarize this thing. So it will be like a quick jump into kind of thing. Well, um, what would need to happen is that this would need to get stored at, at the moment. I think we can just use our regular wiki. It's fine until we move it over into GitHub. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. like one thing that needs to happen. And then the other is, is I guess, um, probably want to work with Nair. I'll try to join in actually on the engineering standards. Um, adding this in engineering standards, basically. So maybe you want cool. to coordinate with Mal. Cool. I, I would like to. Okay. Just let me write some notes. Cool. Awesome. So... All right, well, thank you for your time and useful information that you just shared with us. And we look forward to actually using this. Cool, me too. I'm looking forward to using this because it's one of the cool technologies out there which is going to make your life and my life easier <laughs> as a developer. So yeah, that's, let's have it in. <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> All right, cool. take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye.